And welcome to See You Real Talk. I am your host, Kyle Luders, and I'm joined here in the studio with Cecilio Ramirez. Say hello, Cecilio. This is I, Cecilio. And Mr. Dan Hyde. Hello. All right, we are back here for our second episode. I uh, hope you checked out the first one. we got four new topics to talk about tonight, guys, so let's go right into it. NBA playoffs. What do you got for me, Cecilio? Um, let's see, NBA playoffs. Well, really, right now what's got me concerned is the whole Carmelo story because we all know Denver is my team, and hopefully if Golden State loses tonight, they're out of it and Denver's in it. But apparently Monday morning, I just heard the news today, apparently Monday morning uh, Carmelo was busted with a DUI. And yeah. He got arrested at the DUI early Monday morning. So that means he must have been out partying. All night long. <laughs> Sunday night. All night long. Yeah, but uh, so far the playoffs, is everybody's in where they where they need to be. And uh, Golden State's got their last game tonight. If they lose, they're out of it. And if they win, they could be in it. Yeah, and they actually have to beat Phoenix to get into it. So that's a real good team. That's, that's not the team you want to play. if San Antonio and Houston both lose – then the New Orleans Hornets, who haven't had a really good season, will be the number one team in mm-hmm. the whole West, and they'll win the Southwest Division, which is the hardest division in the NBA right now. Yeah, yeah. definitely. But the real concern is, is Oklahoma City going to have a basketball team next year? Is Seattle actually going to get out of their contract with the key arena and come to Oklahoma City yeah. next year. That really is yeah. a hot button, yeah. hot button issue going around here, especially something that hits close to home. For those of you that do not know, the Seattle Supersonics are thinking about relocating to Oklahoma City. Now they are currently locked in an agreement with the key arena in Seattle. If they can get out of that, ownership would like to move them down to Oklahoma City. And let's get our thoughts. Yeah, well, basically, I, I mean, Oklahoma's been waiting on a team because we had the Hornets playing up there after – uh, everything that went down with with the Katrina situation that we're playing up here for a while. And people here are hungry for a team. We were in Oklahoma City. We were in Oklahoma City about, what, a week ago, Dan? And, yeah. and that's what they were uh, on Channel 4. That's what they were doing. They were doing a, a poll on uh, – well, not a poll, but they were asking yeah. what, what – what the team name should be. And, mm-hmm. and you had people calling in and giving their opinion, and it was funny to hear yeah, some Yeah, they had some crazy ones like our state bird, the Oklahoma yeah. Scissor Tails. I just don't see yeah, that being an intimidating We, we did hear some pretty wacky names. Then we hear, like, gunslingers. Yeah. And, yeah. <laughs> they were they were crazy. I personally like Oklahoma Outlaws. I think that's a good name. Plus, you can do some good colors with that, and mm-hmm. that's what it's all about in selling jerseys. You so you wouldn't that. want that green and yellow anymore, huh? No, I like green and yellow. In fact, that was the school I went to was green and yellow, so I have no problem with green I th- and yellow. I think it's one of the coolest uh, NBA combinations, actually. Yeah. But I just don't see how you can make an outlaw green and yellow. Mm-hmm. It's, it's so just not outlaw. <laughs> green and yellow, obviously, is the color of the Seattle Super Sonics, as it got it right now. So that's kind of our NBA talk here, guys. Let's move on to some camera news. Uh, this has been a big controversy here on campus. The, uh, the SGA elections were, uh, what was it, about a, two weeks ago. Two weeks ago. And basically, you picked your president, your vice president, and your treasurer. There were no mm-hmm. ticket elections. However, there are some very big discrepancies on how the vice presidential election went. To be as, Tobias Kuhn actually did win 50% of the majority, but he needed 50% plus one vote to win the election. Megan Mefford, his opponent, challenged this ruling and had a runoff election, and she won that by about 30 to 40 votes. But as I understand it, Tobias is still challenging yeah. the still, first he's election. Still appealing. Yeah. He's still appealing. Okay, let's get your guys' thoughts on this because I know you guys talk about this quite a bit. Yeah. Well, like, we talked to Megan today. We saw her on campus and we were talking to her. And I actually congratulated her thinking that it was over from what yeah. I had heard. And she said, no, that to- Tobias. It's not Tobias. It's Tobias, right? It, it's one of the two. Yeah, I think that we had an <laughs> argument over how to say his name. I think it's Tobias, and uh, he, she said he's appealing it, and I mean he has that right. I mean that's the process. So, but you know, sooner or later it's going to be done. But I mean, politics, is politics, whether yeah. it's at a national level or yeah. a regional level, or even at a college university, you still have those Florida issues. If you yeah, know what I'm saying. Florida and Ohio, Ohio issues yeah, where yeah. someone didn't punch this ticket right or whatever. Or, 51% of the vote so or 50% I get of the vote. shot, you know what I mean? Yeah, we might actually see that coming up here in the Democratic thing because mm-hmm. Hillary and yeah. Obama are so tight in their yeah. thing. Well, and we had the situation where Hillary was trying to uh, go back and have the primaries count in a couple states, I believe. I think mm-hmm. it was Ohio and another one. Oh, no, it was, it was uh, Michigan Ohio. and Florida because yeah. they jumped the yeah. 
the primary. That's really what up. it is. I mean, they disagree yeah. with the decision and they appeal it and keep appealing it. If that's if they have that right, they'll yeah. keep doing it. You got appeals on top of appeals on top of appeals. That is very true. And Hyde, you were telling me something a uh, funny joke here before the show started that uh, the current vice president situation is actually worse than the uh, presidential election in Florida back in two thousand. Right? Yeah, I mean, it's coming down to a, a minuscule amount of votes. I mean, yeah. Tobias actually won the first time. He actually won, but not by the margin set uh, forth in the charter. You know. Now, I mean? we would like to make yeah. mention that Tobias did write the election rules. <laughs> I didn't know that. Though. He oh. did write the election <laughs> rules, well, ladies and gentlemen. In that case, well, in that case it, uh, he has no appeal. <laughs> the original election rule states that you must win by a majority plus one. Now, Tobias did win by a majority, but he did not win by a majority plus one. That is what Megan Meffer did challenge and it was upheld by Zeke Nafee, one of the Student Government Association advisors. That is why we had a runoff election here, and that is what is creating such a huge controversy, because Megan did win the runoff election. However, Tobias did not campaign as much, and it is believed to be, because he was still thought that his appeal would be upheld. Well, that... Sounds like a sorry loser to me. Yeah, I know. <laughs> Well, 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 we have, you know, when we're talking about vice president of the SGA, you know, there's not very many positions on campus that carry much prestige, but, you know, vice president of SGA, you know, you got a little pop, you get a little office and everything like that, so I bet you, I bet you Tobias is really, you know, kind of wanting to keep that. Yeah, but. well, he's probably, going, a lot of the people that run for those elections are people that are going to go on to get their master's and their doctorate, and it looks good on their transcripts, or even when they go into businesses, in the future, you know, to show you were the vice president of Western your government. university, yeah. not high school, but of your university, that shows a little bit more. It shows some it leadership. Kind of leadership. Yeah, you get, I mean, it gives a little, add a little weight. Yeah. Not much, but it adds a little. All righty, guys. Well, now that we've got done talking to the, about the SGA election, let's talk about boxing fight. This oh, boxing fight right here. Getting me too excited. The Puerto Rican dream. Miguel Cotto. We were uh, watching the pay per view the other night, and yeah. it was. It was the welterweight division, 160... 146. 146. My bad. I'm going too it's far. Right. I'm getting too excited. <laughs> but anyway, uh, basically, we have Miguel Cotto knocking mm. out uh, the contenders, Alfonso, Alfonso Gomez, Gomez, in five rounds. And, I mean, he didn't just knock him down three times prior to that, but, I mean, they stopped the fight coming in the next round. It, yeah, but you don't forget that the Mexican actually won the first fight yeah. between yeah, we the had, Mexican we and the had, Puerto Rican. This was basically... Puerto Rican Mexican Boxing Day, and as yeah. we all know, some of the most exciting fights have come from Puerto Rican fighters fighting these Mexican fighters. And uh, basically, the undercard was with uh, Margarito. Margarito versus Citron. Versus Citron, which yeah. is the Puerto Rican native. And in that fight, Margarito finished in about six rounds. Yeah. So he had he had won that fight in six rounds. So it was two two beatings. The first one, the Mexican being the Puerto Rican, and the second one, it was the Puerto Rican fighting the. The, the Mexican that won. Yeah, but the thing that really impressed me and Cecilio that we were talking about earlier today was that these two fights were not like an undercard yeah. and a, the, the headliner. It yeah. was like watching two like headliner head. matches. Yeah, it was like a double header. And the, actually what they were talking about was the two, the winner from the first fight and the winner of the second fight are scheduled to fight in July now, which I like that yeah, format was that they – you got to see the two fighters that were getting ready to come up and fight, too. Yeah, yeah. I thought it was really and, cool. And the way boxing is going right now, you know, with fighters like Floyd Mayweather, you know, that doesn't want to yeah. give fighters like Cotto a, a chance at, at his record. Even Duck Margarito, yeah, too, they said. Yeah. he's been He ducked him yeah, as a well, fight, too. I mean, you got fighters like Mayweather that keep ducking like that. You know, we just might have these exciting fights coming from the undercard mm -hmm. going against the, the, top, the top fighter. Yeah, definitely. Which we have in Margarito and Cota, which is coming up in a couple months. All right, well, good deal here. We got about a minute left, so we're going to talk about a few things here. Uh, Cecilio, uh, the Batman movie that you were uh, director of photography on is getting ready to get done. How you get? How you feeling about seeing that movie? Uh, I'm ready to see it. Uh, seen the trailer, and I was pretty happy with it. And I was there through a lot of the production, and I was pretty happy with that. So I'm just ready to see how it all comes through. Since I, I'm not too too big a part on the editing process, but I'd like to see how uh, my man Kyle did on that. <laughs> I think your favorite scene, Cecilia, was uh, the uh, beat scene. Was that correct? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That was that was my scene. I was actually acting in that one. Someone else was was photogging that. And... Well, alrighty, folks. Well, that'll wrap it up for this edition of CU Real Talk. Now, remember, you can see all of CU's programming on YouTube now. Simply go to YouTube and click in CU Internet TV with no spaces and click search. While you're at it, look up not another Batman movie. Alrighty, guys. 
Well, that will do it here for this epi- episode of See You Real Talk. I am Kyle Luz, joined with Cecilia Ramirez and Dan Hyde. We'll see you next time.